Mick, you're the first base coach, which back on July 9th was kind of cool because Derek Jeter, after hitting 3,000, ran right by you. What do you remember about that home run trot of Jeter's? Well, I thought it was a beautiful trot. He's got a nice trot, <laughs> nice stride. And uh, um, I happened to be mic'd at first base. I was mic'd for like five days. For us, thank you. Yes, for yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, so that was great. And as soon as he hit that, that ball, I knew it was out of the ballpark because it, uh, it had a great sound to it. And so uh, he came flying around first base. So I really said, just, hey, way to go, G. That ball's out of here. I was all excited. <laughs> so I really didn't get, didn't get to talk to him. I was right. just yelling, hey, way to go, you know. And Could you see anything on his face? Was he smiling yes. yet? Yeah, he was smiling. He was smiling. And it was really cool. Uh, Casey Kochman tipped his cap yeah. as he uh, went by. And I thought that was really neat. But then... Uh, yeah, it was just a, a great day and a, and a great honor for him. What a great player. Even when you're in baseball for decades, that will be a day you remember forever, right? Oh, I mean, yes. that one will stand out. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many guys uh, have 3,000 hits? Um, not too many. And um, I happened to play with one, uh, Rod Carew, who, who was a teammate of mine back, uh, back in the day. But uh, uh, he had 3,000 hits, too, so that was really exciting for him. One thing that I wanted to talk to you about today, Mick, is mm -hmm. stolen bases, because you're usually the guy who sees the takeoff, and Brett Gardner in particular has stolen 13 in a row without being caught. Mm -hmm. Has he made an adjustment, or is there something going particularly right for Gardner over the past month? Well, his lead is the same. He's still getting the same lead that he did early in the season. Uh, the biggest change, I think, is that he's, uh, he's almost gotten uh, an attitude about... Uh, stealing second base or stealing third base. So it's an attitude that, that is a, uh, a tough mental attitude, whereas before he was a little, bit, uh, a little bit timid. He wanted to wait for the right pitch, or he wanted me to give him the right time uh, as a pitcher's times to the plate and then pick a pitch. So he was a little bit timid on going. Now he, is, uh, he, he wants the base. He's going to go after it. In fact, the other day he said uh, when we were in Toronto, somebody threw over four straight times, and he was getting worn out. So he wasn't sure he was going to run. Then, he, then the pitcher made a pitch to the plate, and then he came over two more times, and he got up and he said, that's it, I'm gone. Just like that. And next pitch he was off, stolen base. He Sorry told me that story in Toronto as well. It was yeah. Sean Camp on the yeah. mound, and yeah. Gardner simply said he made me mad. Maybe a, an aggressive, kind of angry Brett Gardner's better. His all-around game, especially at the plate, seems to have picked up along with mm -hmm. on the base paths. Yeah, well, it kind of goes hand in hand. You know, confidence is a big part of this game. And uh, base dealers don't like to get thrown out, you know, and particularly speedy base runners. Uh, they'd rather be, uh, you know, safe, right? Yeah. Safe. Uh, but I think he's thrown that out. He doesn't, uh, he's got the attitude now that he's running and uh, uh, he's going to uh, steal that bag. And, and 13 for 13 is really, uh, really awesome. And he's creeping up on uh, Ellsbury uh, for the league lead. So this is really good for him and for us. Do, do guys ever do that? Do they ever say, I'm gone and steal a bag? I mean, have you seen it before? <laughs> Well, if I did, I, I, I can't remember it, but, uh, you know, how many guys uh, um, s steal a bag like that after six out of seven uh, times trying to pick them off? And Camp has a really good move to first, and when he throws to first, he's not just, it's not, not a token uh, pickoff move, it's, he's trying to pick you off. So he gave him six very good moves, and, uh, and that, that's what caused him, and so he's got that attitude now that uh, he's running. You have that stopwatch in your pocket. I know that you guys also watch a ton of video of pitchers and, and catchers as well as you try to time things yes. for stolen bases. Give us a, a hint of the kind of thing you look for going into a series, especially maybe if you haven't seen a pitcher before. What are you looking for? Well, what we do is we, uh, I do, um, put, uh, uh, I get a list of all the pitchers we're going to be facing relievers and uh, starters and go through that and uh, Guardy is a real good student and Grandy is too and Jeet we have a lot of good students of video uh, on our ball club and because uh, they like to run so uh, you know I study it uh, they study it uh, Rob Thompson studies it and and we put our little notes together and uh, so we pick up uh, um, discrepancies in, in the deliveries or we pick up uh, uh, moves and we do times to the plate so we we figure um, if we combine the pitchers uh, times to the plate and the catchers arm strength um, with speed the individual speed and, and for instance a guardy uh, Brett Gardner well he can run pretty much against anybody so let's just say a guy has a slide step and a slide step is a quick move to the plate to hold the base runner um, and guys use 
pitchers use uh, slide steps on Guardy because they know he's going to run. Um, so a slide step, one, two to one, three to the plate is quick. Now, most people can't run. Guardy's probably the only guy on our ball club that can run on a slide step and be safe. How many seconds does Gardner need to know he has to get from first to second if he has a decent lead? Okay, let's just, let's just create a scenario here. Okay. Let's say the, uh, the catcher is a 1.9 to second base. From the touch of the glove to the touch of the glove at second base, 1.9. And the pitchers, let's say, um, let's say he's 1.35. Okay, so now we've got, uh, we got 3.25, right? Well, Gardy can get down there probably in 3.2. So if he gets a good jump on this pitcher, even with a slide step, he can make it. So that's, kind of, that's how you, you go. You, it's, it's a calculation, yeah. basically, based on uh, uh, times. It's a game Stop-wise. within the game. Do you yeah, like this exactly stuff? Do you love this is. stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really it, exactly what you just said. It's a game within the game that uh, you know, most people don't uh, have to worry about or think about. They just see a, a base dealer taken off. But uh, it's all calculated. And, um, you know, base runners have different, uh, different speeds. So um, not everybody can run. Right. And... Uh, you know, there's a difference between base stealing and base running. So um, we've done a really good job of base running this year, and uh, our base stealing has been, is picking up. Who's the best base stealer you've been around in your career? Well, I played with Lou Brock. He was pretty good. <laughs> um, he was probably, he's probably the best. Okay. Yeah. He's probably the best base stealer that, I, that I'd ever seen. Gardner would argue that he's the best probably, knowing Gardner, right? <laughs> Maybe not yet. Yeah, well, he might be the best base dealer on, uh, right now. Right. Right now, yeah. yeah. One more thing before we let you go. Sure. James Shields from the Rays is, has a, is a guy who has a great pickoff move. Yes. So do you and, say, Gardner look at that as a challenge going into a game against him? Or how does it change just your mindset mm-hmm. going into a game when you know a pitcher is very good at that? Okay, like a guy like, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go over it before the game, but uh, a guy like James Shields, um, he likes to have a ball in his hand. He like he picks on the way up into his set set position. He'll pick. He's uh, um, so we go over these little notes and um, with all the players really and let them know that uh, what he does and how he does it. Um, and you have to honor a guy who has a good move to first base. You have to honor it. So. Um, you don't get your lead, and you need to shorten up if you're going to run. But he's quick to first. He's quick to the plate. So there's a guy that's tough to run against. So we talk about it. It's communication. We just, you know, there's, there's dialogue going on during the course of the game in between pitches. I'll walk up to the uh, the base runner, the base dealer, and, and you know, we talk. He said, "What was the what was the time?" Oh, it's one two five. Okay, and then so that's a breaking ball. So you know, we go we go two five breaking ball or, or three five fastball. So you know, they they get an idea about uh, timing. And uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty neat, the dialogue. You know, baseball is about communication, really. And that's just a little bit of communication that goes on during the game, pitch to pitch at first base.